If you've been watching the hunting industry, you're probably already familiar with the biggest apparel brands in the space like Kuyu and Sitka. But today, I want to talk to you about another major player in the hunting apparel market. That's Stone Glacier. They started making high-end clothing a few years ago, and now they have an extensive lineup for the Western Big Game Hunter. I recently purchased a full kit to test this season, and today I'm going to talk about the purchasing decisions I would make if I had $1,000 to spend on Stone Glacier. Now before I start, I want to point out that everyone's body type is going to be a little bit different. Some people sweat more than others, some people get cold easier than others, so make sure you know your body type before you spend a bunch of money on high-end apparel. And one more thing is before you spend a dime on clothing, I would say make sure you have a good pair of boots that fits you well. So as far as clothing goes, the most important piece that you're going to have is going to be your pants. They put up with the most abuse, they put up with the most movement, and you can't really change them on the trail as easily as you can an upper layer. Now, if you're looking at Stone Glacier's website, you'll see they got the 206 pant, the de Havilland light, and the de Havilland proper. I would definitely go with the de Havilland light pant because it's going to be light enough for those early season hunts, but you throw a pair of long johns under these, and it's going to get you into that later season. Uh, especially if you're on a budget, this is for sure the pant to get. The de Havilland's going to be quite a bit warmer than you want for the majority of your hunts, I would guess. And then the 206 pant is just a little too light for that late season application. These pants have uh, Stone Glacier's patented contour zip, as do all of their pants. Um, low profile belt loops, option for knee pads, full side zippers for ventilation. And this is especially key when you're looking at an all around pant. Uh, in hot weather, you open these up and it really ventilates, so you're going to be good there. Um, I like the way they do their pockets. The material itself is a little bit noisy, but not too bad. And all around, this really is a fantastic hunting pant. It breathes well, it cuts the wind, it fits nicely. It's going to be a little bit looser than um, some of you, like your, your more athletic fits, but when wearing it, I never really feel like they're too baggy on me. So again, if you're looking for an all-around pant, uh, especially specific to Stone Glacier, but honestly, between any brand, the de Havilland Light is a really great way to go. So because we chose the de Havilland Light pant, I'm also going to throw in the Merino bottoms that they offer. The reason for that is we're trying to hit with $1,000 everything from August to November. And the de Havilland light paint isn't quite going to cut it on its own in a November mule deer hunt. So we'll throw in the merino bottoms, um, especially if you're doing like early season somewhere in Alaska. You're going to want these on and obviously late season as well. The reason I chose the merino is because they don't offer a synthetic bottom. Typically your synthetics are going to be cheaper, so I would normally go with that. But the synthetic thermal that they offer is their Helio, which is going to be a thicker... Um, grid fleece bottom, which is definitely going to be specific to very cold weather hunts. I don't think I'd want to hike in the Helio bottom unless it's seriously low temperatures. So for an all around thermal, we're going to go with the Chinook Merino bottoms. Now, when we start talking about an upper body base layer, I went with the Avro synthetic hoodie. Uh, this is going to be quick drying. It's got polygene treatment. It's going to be lightweight all the things you want out of a base layer. And the toss up there was, do I go with the Merino or the synthetic? And I actually really like Stone Glacier's Merinos. A lot of offerings of Merino I, I'm not a fan of and I will lean towards the synthetic, but Stone Glacier did a great job at making a softer Merino and I really think they nailed the weight of it. So it was a big decision for me on which one to choose. They're the same piece, the same fit, uh, you do have a chest pocket in the Merino option, but I don't really like the placement of the chest pocket. It's kind of down by your rib cage, which uh, tended to sag when I put anything in it. So that doesn't matter to me. And then I'm looking at a $40 difference between the two. So for 40 bucks less, I can go with a synthetic. And like I said, it is going to be quicker drying and a little lighter weight. So that's probably the option that I'm going to choose, especially if I'm on a budget. You like this video so far we've got a lot more coming out this winter so if you don't want to miss another video hit that subscribe button now we're going to get into the thick of it and talk about a mid layer and i'm choosing the cirque light now i know what you're thinking 
Brady, that's not a mid layer, that's an insulation layer. Go with the Helio. But hear me out here. The Helio is a fantastic piece. It's a standard grid fleece. A lot of other brands offer it, nothing too special. What I didn't love about the Helio was the placement of the chest pocket, the fit of the hood, and then I found it to be really staticky when I was trying to put it on over a merino base layer. And these are all small gripes. It performed great, but there were a couple things about it that I was like, mm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a little more refinement out of a product that I'm gonna spend that much money on. However, the Cirque Light, I was very pleased with. And so if I'm gonna recommend someone spend, you know, a limited amount of money on an item from Stone Glacier, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that they're getting something they love. And the Cirque Light really hits that, uh, that dual purpose category well. The difference between the Helio and the Cirque Light, uh, you know, Helio's a grid fleece, it's gonna be breathable, stretchy, not protect you from the wind, but hold moderate warmth. The Cirque Light is gonna be kind of a hybrid piece part thin synthetic insulation here, and then part breathable grid fleece on the sides. So you can still hike in this, uh, but you'll also get more warmth and more wind protection. So like I said, it, it kind of fits both categories there. If you're looking at bang for your buck, this is a really great option. And a lot of the guys in the office say they love it. So I talked with them for a while. We all argued about you know this, that, or the other. And we all came to the conclusion that if we could only get one of these pieces, it would be the Cirque Light. Another thing that I'll throw in there is the Cirque and the Cirque Vest. Um, also both great pieces. This is gonna be quite a bit thicker than the Cirque Light on the insulation. And then obviously you don't have the hybrid fabric. There's no grid fleece on the side. So hiking in this is not gonna be nearly as breathable as the Cirque Light. And so then say the Cirque Vest, which is a piece that I've used quite a bit and I love it. But if I was only getting one, I would probably still go with the Cirque Light, mainly because it's kind of a multi-purpose piece. And like I said, talking about bang for your buck, the Cirque Light kind of nails it. All right, so you've got your synthetic base layer, you've got your insulating mid layer. Now you need to choose a true insulation layer. And there's a couple routes you could go. Uh, you could go with the Cirque Synthetic, you could go with the Grumman, or you could go with the Grumman Light. Now, this was a pretty easy decision. Talking with all the guys in the office, we all agreed the Grumman is the way to go. In terms of bang for your buck over the Grumman Light, you've got way more insulation per dollar and per ounce than the Grumman Light. And then compared to the Cirque, you're just gonna get a lot more warmth out of a down insulation layer like that. So uh, putting the Cirque Light underneath the Grumman jacket is gonna be a winning combination, especially for those cold weather hunts. And, you know, between the fill weight, the fill power, the treated down, the fit of this jacket, and just how much warmth it holds, it's probably one of my favorite down jackets of all time. And it's not overly priced. So it's really a pretty easy decision there. If you're looking for an insulation layer from Stone Glacier, the first one you should absolutely buy is the Grumman jacket. Now we've got almost a full kit for Western big game hunting and we're still under $1,000. If it were me at this point, I'd consider stretching the budget and picking up the SQ2 Gator. Um, Stone Glacier really nailed it with these. In my opinion, they're some of the best Gators on the market and they're not unreasonably priced. So uh, if you're doing any sort of hunting in rain, in snow, anywhere with uh, a lot of brush and you get stickers in your boots, the Gator is gonna be a winning combo. Now, one more thing I wanna cover is rain gear. Mm, on a Western hunt, you're probably 50-50 shot that you might get some precipitation. And if you're looking to do it on a budget, probably get something like a poncho. You can pick them up for like 25 bucks. That's a great option for light precipitation. If you're expecting true rain, you kinda gotta bite the bullet and start looking at breathable rain gear if you're gonna hunt in it. Now, uh, Stone Glacier offers the M5 series and the M7 series. Personally, I really love the M7 jacket. I like that fleece layer on the inside and then it's you know only 50 bucks more or so. 
I'm for sure going with the M7 on the jacket. On the pants, I'm gonna go with the M5. Uh, I don't really need that fleece on my legs and they're a little more packable. The biggest reason though, is that the M5 can zip all the way down and I can remove them without taking off my boots. The M7 pant, you cannot zip it off all the way. So it's a lot harder to remove with your boots on. You're probably gonna have to take your boots off. So back to our list, we're coming in at just over $1,000 because we added the gaiters. If I was trying to stay to a strict $1,000 budget, I'd probably remove the merino bottoms. It's more of a luxury item, I would say, and you can likely find a pair of thermal bottoms for less than $90 at a local thrift store or something. If you are truly trying to save cash and wondering, you know, if you can only afford a couple of these pieces, I would for sure say the de Havilland light pant is worth the money and the Grumman down jacket is worth the money. Aside from that, these are all fantastic pieces, but don't spend outside of your budget. You don't need to get uh, a full setup from the same brand. It's okay to have mismatched pieces and you know, over time work up to a proper kit that you're really happy with. Now I'm sure you have a few more questions. Go ahead and leave them in the comments below. We'll try and get back to you when we can. Obviously you can always call in, ask us whatever questions you want, place your order on the phone. We can help you out there. Uh, if you want to just order online, go to gearful.com, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and thanks for watching.